All right. I think I gave everybody enough time. So now what we're going to do. Let me see. There we go. So if you look on your Google Classroom, you can see that we started with we started with economic systems, which one is best, right? The command, the traditional, and the free market. And I said, okay, well, we're a free market system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the characteristics of this free market system called capitalism. And then from there, we said, okay, after we looked at the characteristics of capitalism, I said, okay, now, how do we tell in a capitalistic system, because that's important, whether the economy is doing well or poorly, right? And then I said, in a capitalistic system, you got to be careful as a consumer because the producer wants to make money. That's called profit motive. That is one of the characteristics of capitalism. So they might screw you over. So you got to be careful. And then we got into, I wanted you to think about whose responsibility is it? Cab A and poor, buyer beware, or should it be the seller? not to manipulate and then on tuesday i gave you a couple of days to look at this what are some government interventions that they do in a capitalist system in the united states so now we've looked at a lot of consumer stuff right we've looked at consumer stuff today and, and the last couple of days so now what we're going to do though what about the producer what about the producer in a capitalist system okay what are some of the things that the producer has to worry and stress about? And that's what we're going to focus on today. If you are to create your own business, 90% of businesses, and this is a couple of years ago stat, but I'm sure it still holds true. 90% of businesses fail because they don't, they don't calculate cost correctly. So what that means is, Every business is going to try to make money. That's called profit motive. That was one of your characteristics of capitalism, right? Well, yes, you want to provide a service. Yes, you want to better your community with this product. But at the end of the day, you got to make money in order to stay in business. And 90% of businesses, they did this economic forum study, and especially restaurants. If you open your own restaurant, 90% of these fail within the first two years because they don't calculate cost running the business correctly. And so they don't, they don't price their product high enough to make a profit. So what are those costs? Um, and, and this is just an intro lesson. Obviously you're going to go, you're going to open your own business. You're going to take some business classes, maybe at 80 tech and things like that. And this will be your foundation. All right. So that's what we're looking at today. Very important, especially if you want to be a producer. So go to your notes, go to your notebook and or to your Google, Google notes. I'll be going back and forth today in the classroom. I'll be moving this camera a little bit. And the first thing we want to do is we want to review profit motive. And that's going to be the motivation of sellers to make money by producing a product so Obviously not this year because we got COVID, but I got an idea. I said, you know, I used to do student council uh, many, many years ago. Well, not really many years ago, but enough years ago when you guys were middle school. And one of the things that we wanted to do was we needed to raise money in order to put on our pep rallies and things like that. And one of the things that I looked around at students when the desks were full, is a lot of students would come in with coffee. And I go, how much do you pay for that? And it's like $4, $5. I'm like, dang, that's crazy. And I said, you know what? I'm going to create my own coffee shop in class. And so there you go. There you see 
the our own little coffee shop in class. But before I did this, I had to see, you know, one, will I be able to sell this coffee at a cheaper rate and make a profit for student council? And then I needed to, in order to do that, I needed to figure out what my costs were. So that brings us back to this little thing. So what are, what are costs facing producers? All spacing producers. We got three of them. Right? Not, there's not a whole lot of notes here. It's just sort of listening and connecting to the call spacing producers. We have fixed costs. These are easy. Fixed costs are cost that. Fixed costs are costs that don't go up or down depending on the amount produced. This is all gonna make sense in a minute. Let's go ahead and get the vocabulary down and then I'm gonna show you. And then you'll be like, oh yeah, okay. So fixed costs are costs that do not go up and down depending on how much is produced. So in my Gonzo coffee shop, whether I make one cup of coffee or a million cups of coffee by the time I retire, these costs are going to be fixed. There are going to be some costs that when I get into this business that are not going to change. Okay. The next one is going to be variable costs. Variable costs are going to be costs that change depending on the amount produced. So you can see my green here, how it just changed that. Variable costs, costs that change depending on the amount that I produce. So sometimes I might produce one cup of coffee and sell it. And my cost will be one thing. But then at the end of the month, I might produce 100 cups of coffee and my variable costs are going to be a different thing. So I got to figure out what are those costs that change? What are those costs that stay fixed? So let's go on over here. So now what you guys are going to do and what you guys in class are going to do is somewhere beside these definitions, we're going to put the examples. You might want to even doodle the examples, however you want to do this, okay? So here's the Gonzalez coffee shop. I have coffee. All right. I sell hot chocolate and tea. For the purposes of this lesson, we are going to just stay with coffee, okay? Just stay with coffee. So we're gonna focus on all these coffee bags. Now, let's look at the fixed cost. Fixed costs are costs that do not change depending on how much we produce. And let's say that we're going to calculate this uh, weekly, all right? so. This Keurig machine, I had to buy a Keurig machine that was commercial, all right? So the Keurig machine was a commercial cost and it was, let's just round up a penny and it was $300, all right? So is this Keurig machine a fixed cost or a variable cost? Okay, good. Everybody in the classrooms told me that this is a fixed cost because this Keurig machine it doesn't matter. I'm not having to go back to Walmart and buy 
and say, hey, listen, I'm making a lot of money off this Keurig machine. Here's some more money, right? So this Keurig machine doesn't care how many cups of coffee that I produce this week, right? So this would be a good example of a fixed cost. So now what I want you to do in your notes is I want you to go somewhere, maybe even drop down below examples of fixed costs for our coffee shop. So let's create a little coffee shop and put some examples. Maybe let's go T-chart it. So you can do this, you can go coffee shop and we got fixed and variable and this will be um this will be considered fc and this is bc so you got a little t-chart you got a coffee shop you got fixed costs you got variable costs so over here on fixed costs we're going to have curing machine and we're going to say that is 300 dollars All right. And then I bought this caddy. And the caddy, the caddy, the coffee caddy, all right, keeps the cups, all right, and it keeps the lids and, and it holds things as little drawers. Fixed cost or variable cost? Fixed cost, good. All right, so we're gonna put caddy, C-A-D-D-Y on that other side of the T-chart. And let's say that's 20 bucks. I don't remember how much it was, but let's just say caddy. Caddy is gonna be 20 bucks. All right. Not the sugar inside, not the sugar inside, but the, but the container, this nice little, see, I was getting bags the first, first week I did this, I just had a bag out with a spoon, sugar was getting everywhere, and it wasn't very nice, it wasn't a good experience, all right, they wanted to have, you know, this is nice, you know, you come over, you know, think it's in the morning, you know, and people, you know, people be lined up, and you know, we're, and they just get to pour their sugar, you know. I know you got to do it like this right here. I know I see it every year. All right. So the container, the holder of sugar, fixed or variable? Fixed. Okay, good. All right. So, and then let's just say that's a dollar, right? So, what do we call that thing? What do you call it? A sugar dispenser. That's two words. Sugar dispenser. All right. Let's, so we're going to call that a dollar. Sugar dispenser, a dollar. So whether we produce one cup of coffee or a, a hundred cups of coffee this week, I only had to pay for this one time. All right. Now you get it, hopefully. Fixed cost, right? Let's look at some variable costs. There are 96. 96 pods, let's just call it 100 to make it simple, yeah, okay? Just, what? So why did they just do 100? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's because they don't want the consumer to be able to do that math to figure out how much each pod is. Um, so let's just say 100 of these pods, right? These cured pods. Is this a variable cost? And hopefully they're going, oh yeah, this is a variable cost because if, if Mr. Gonzalez produces one cup of coffee this week, then he bought this box, but he only sold one, all right? And then, but if he sold 97 or 101, then he'd have to buy two boxes. If I sold 300, I'd have to buy three boxes of this. So sometimes the amount of coffee that I have to buy will sometimes go up and down. So let's go over to our T-chart and put, I'll do a different color. I know you guys at home can't see this, but it's gonna be coffee pods 
as well. Coffee pods, and let's just keep it simple. Let's just say ten dollars. Creamer, creamer, fixed or variable, variable, all right? And this is what you guys do. This is why I started doing hot chocolate, by the way, all right? I mean, it's like, I mean, I mean, it's crazy. I'm like, oh my God, it's like the color of your desk, by the way, all right? But that's all right, right? Okay, all right. So creamer, we're going to put creamer on that side and let's go. Two bucks. Sugar. Let's go ahead and put sugar on this side. And let's put a dollar. You needed stirs. You needed stirs. You know how the big uh, plastic straw things came out? So uh, last year, you know, the plastic straw boom. I used to buy stirs, like the little black plastic straws, and they were cheaper. And then one of my students said, Michigan is solid. We should be buying not plastic straws. I said, I understand, but this is, the plastic straws are cheaper. And we had done this lesson. She said, I will boycott your product if you don't buy plastic uh wooden uh, and i said oh good you're connecting the lesson and uh so i went out and i'm splurging now i have these the wooden stirs all right but it's cutting into my it's cutting into my profit margins but you know it's okay they're good to chew on when we don't have covid so let's go over back over to our fork and let's put stirs I don't know how to spell it. Stirs, and let's put three dollars. And then the last thing we obviously need another variable cost is actually going to be the actual cups, right? The actual cups. So we're going to do cups. And we're going to go twenty dollars. That was the other thing I noticed. The very first time that I started this, the very first week I did this, I was just using cheap cups, almost sort of like this, and it wasn't as nice, right? It wasn't as nice of an experience. So I said, "Huh, I'm going to go out. I'm going to buy the good cups. You know, the foamy ones with a good texture on them." And guess what happened? Sales went up because it's a better experience. All right. It's closer to the Starbucks, you know, type deal. All right. So now we have our fixed costs and our variable costs. In order to get this business off the ground, we got to figure out what our total cost is. So go back to the board and put another vocabulary word. What is total cost? It's gonna be fixed cost, FC, plus variable cost equals total cost. This tells you how much it costs to start your business and produce one product. So 
if I wanted to start competing with the Dunkin' Donuts of the world and the Starbucks of the world, I needed to figure out, is it going to be worth it to do this, to start this business? I had to figure out my total cost. So here we are on our board. This is, I literally did this, by the way. Okay, I'm not just making this up. This is what we literally did. All right. So I got to go FC plus VC. We got 300. 320, 321. So my fixed cost of $321. My variable cost, 10, 13, 15, 35, 36. So VC plus FC equals TC. So we got 321. Or we got 36 plus 321 equals 381. I got 357. Did, did you got, uh, maybe I missed. 30, 36, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm awful. <laughs> 357. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I got. Three, three, 357. Yeah. <laughs> I think you looked at the same Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the total cost is $357. Now, am I going to charge $358 for a cup of coffee? No. No. So there's got to be something more here, right? Mr. Pilas is like, all right, well, that's how much it is to produce your very first cup. That's your startup cost. If you remember back, and it would flow better, obviously, if we were in the class because we would be doing more lessons in a shorter period of time. But we did these four factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And so these, these costs are going to factor into your four factors of production. So what we need to do now is we need to look at, all right, well, there's got to be something to figure out unit, unit cost, all right? And that's going to be called marginal cost. So let's go back over to our definitions. This is our last one. We're almost done. Hang in there. You guys are awesome. Go back over here to the board. I'll erase this for space. And let's do, uh, let's do blue again. All right, so marginal cost. Also known as unit cost. This is after you do total cost, now you got to figure out, all right, how much is it to produce plus one, okay? So marginal cost, the amount of cost to produce one additional cup of coffee. Um, a cup is ordered. Marginal cost, the amount of cost to produce one additional cup of coffee each time a cup is ordered. So we know that it costs me around $357 to start this business. So I'm not going to be profitable until I sell a lot of coffee, right? But then after that, how much money will I make per cup? And if it's not, if it's not more than the unit cost, do not produce. Okay, you will not make it. <laughs> All right. So, for example, a student walks over and 
orders a cup of coffee. All right, that's money, right? Variable. This is money. This right here, the stir, that's money, okay? And then after that cup is brewed, they add sugar. That's money, 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 money. I always hated these students. Money, 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 money. I really didn't like these students. The ones that use a lot of creamer. Creamer, 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 creamer. Money, 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 money. All right. A little tip. A little tip that I found that I realized because I'm a sneaky producer. You see this creamer? It's value creamer. You know why it's value creamer? Because we left school when? Last year in March. I had my new students for January and February. I had them for two months. Do you think I used value creamer? No, I got them hooked. I used the good creamer, all right? And so every day they would come in and I'd have this really nice creamer, all right? And then once I got them hooked, then I went to the cheaper stuff and they never said anything. Okay? They never said anything. And it cut my cost down. All right, but anyway. So now we have this cup of coffee made a hot cup. I think Mr. Lust was right. I don't know this is gonna like fall up. All right, so nice hot brew, fresh cup of coffee. You spent money here. You spent money here. You spent it on the coffee cup. And now you're going to stir all of your ingredients how much, how much did that cup of coffee cost to produce? And that is gonna be our marginal and or what's considered unit cost. So, last thing hanging in there, okay? In marginal cost, when we're trying to figure out how much each one cup, Then the next kid comes up and orders. And then the next kid comes up and orders. How much does each cup of coffee cost me, the producer, to produce? Are we gonna look at our fixed cost or are we gonna look at our variable cost? Okay, a lot of voices in the classroom said variable cost. That is correct. We don't have to worry about any of these costs. They don't change, okay? We don't have to worry about our Keurig anymore or the containers anymore. They don't change. So what we need to do is we need to focus on our variable costs. But what we got to do is we got to figure out how much per unit of everything. So This box, this box of coffee costs $10. There's a hundred pods in here. So each pod is how much? Ten cents. All right, so every pod, every pod is 10 cents. Go ahead and write that down. Your marginal cost pod is 10 cents. Your cups, your cups are $20. There are 50 cups in a package. Somebody do that math for me. Yeah, like you use your phone or in your head. 50 cups at $20, how much per cup? Forty cents. The cups cost forty cents. So we got ten cents. We got forty cents. Stirs. There are five. There's three dollars, and there are a package of five hundred. So how much per stir? The little wooden stirs. Thank <laughs> you. 
These little scurs. It's like point zero zero six. <laughs> All right. Okay, and this is the point I want to make. So it's point what? Zero zero six. Okay. Point zero zero six. Point zero zero six. Now this is a this is an important point. Do you need to write that down? Yes. This is where some businesses fail. A lot of businesses go, oh, that's so insignificant. A lot of insignificant costs added up together are going to create significant costs. So we need to make sure that we look at everything when we're trying to produce a product. All right. So we got 0 0.006. We're almost done. Creamer. I literally did this at home. I swear to God, I did this. So. I went and I produced a cup of coffee. All right, you see how it's black right there? And then I said, you know what? The desk, you see the desk color? That's how most students will drink their coffee. Young coffee drinkers, they're not gonna drink coffee black, right? They're not gonna drink it like that, all right? So what I did at home is I literally took a thing of creamer, all right? And I poured it in and I stirred it to see what the color was. And then I said, that's about where students drink their coffee, okay? And then I said, okay, how much creamer was that? All right, I had set it aside. I kept adding, adding, adding. And I said, how much creamer was that? And then I took the entire bottle of creamer and I pumped it out. And I said, how many cups can I get? out of one bottle of creamer, all right? Because that is so important because that, that, that's a big variable cost, right? That's a big variable cost. So, and I forget, it's been, it's been a while. Usually I'll do, I'll go over all my costs right before this lesson, but it's been a while. Um, I think it's like 30 cups or something like that, or 25 cups. Do 30, let's do 30 cups at $2 and see what you get. $2, 30 cups. Six cents. Sorry, we're doing math here, hold on. Yeah, six. Six cents? Yeah, that does actually sound right, okay. Six cents. So now we add up all our variable costs, our unit cost. So we got 10 cents plus 0 0.006 cents, plus 40 cents, plus six cents, plus, oh, sugar. Sugar is like half a cent, plus, actually it's like less than half a cent. It's like 0 0.005, all right? So we're gonna add these up and go ahead and tell me what our unit costs are. They're adding it right now. Fifty what? Fifty point zero seven one. Fifty cents. Fifty point zero seven one cents. That is our unit or marginal cost. So our marginal cost, our unit cost to produce this beautiful. What is that? It's fifty point seven one. You got what? 53? 56 cents? 56 cents, sorry. All right, 56 cents. Okay, point zero, point zero one, one. Yeah. Okay. All right, sorry about that. It's okay. Like, if you have the old number, it's fine. To produce this beautiful, delicious cup of creamy, sugary coffee. Now, look at your very first definition on your page, profit motive. What is my profit motive? One, do I have, will I make a profit? Yes. What is it? What is my profit motive? You take the cost divided by, you take your unit costs 
and subtract those by your marginal unit cost. And that difference is like, what, 40 cents, 30, 34 cents profit. So every time a kid goes and buys a cup of coffee, I'm not losing money. I'm making money. I'm making money. And that's important. Now, the question now is, is my profit motive, is my motivation to do all of this enough to keep it going? All right. And that like to get up out of bed every day and to go to work and be the producer, to be the boss okay, of your company, whether it's a restaurant or a computer programming business, whatever it is. All right. So that's that's what you got to look at. So these are your costs. I'm going to give you some test questions on this. Um, if you need to go back and listen to the lecture, you can. Anybody have any questions on this today? All right, you guys are awesome. I will see you tomorrow.